When I was commissioned into the Air Force the officer who conducted the ceremony was a female three-star general. She looked like your typical short, fit, friendly middle-aged soccer mom, relevant to the story, extremely nice and personable, and an alumna of my university. At breakfast beforehand we were sharing a table, and she and my dad, RLT collared the time, we are talking. The general told a story of when she first showed up to a new base for her first posting as 3 star. While running on the track a guy comes up and starts to run alongside, asking if she had just got there, etc. It quickly becomes very obvious he's hitting on her, so she turns him down and mentions she has a husband. He is not deterred and keeps on hitting on her. The man goes right on talking about how in shape she is, how good looking she is, how they should get together, etc. Also asking questions like, well is your husband at the base yet? Are you staying by yourself in the TLF? TLF being a fancy sort of hotel. He thinks she's a spouse and figures she showed up to get the home in order before her husband arrives. He really wants to hang out, preferably at her hotel room. Nor will he leave her alone until she agrees to a date. Finally after about 15 minutes of him refusing to stop badgering her she relents and agrees to meet up with him again. Fine I'll free up some time and we can talk. What's your name and number? The harasser gives her his name and phone number. He's a staff sergeant many many rungs down in the organization she's now vice commander of. Later that day he was ordered to report to her office, in service dress, at 0730 the next morning. Along with his supervisor, his first sergeant, and his commander. So basically his boss, his other boss, and his boss's boss's boss. She didn't say how the meeting went, but I doubt he enjoyed his date. I was going to buy a car from a small used car dealership. We agreed on a price and a day to meet. The morning of he sold it out from under me, right before I was there with no courtesy call, or text or anything. I wrote an accurate review reflecting my experiences with the dealership online. A couple days later he calls and threatens me with a lawsuit claiming my review is slander. He warned me everyone else that gave a 1 star review was sued for slander and had to pay court fees and remove their review. He said if I edited the review everything would be fine and he wouldn't take me to court. Well I obliged and edited my review stating he threatened me over the phone with a lawsuit since I gave a negative review and that my review was in fact 100% accurate of my experiences. The icing on the cake. I text him right after I edited the review and said, hey man edited the review as requested hope there are no hard feelings. I guess he didn't read my edit before applying with, thanks man I appreciate it. No hard feelings. I'll update if he reads the review and contacts me again. Update, well sorry to disappoint, but his reply was not wildly entertaining as anticipated. He opted to not call me again or text me, but to reply to my review on Google. He absolutely went into damage control mode after my edit stated he threatened a lawsuit over my review. He did what anyone would do and skewed the story to make him look less like the bad guy and more like the poor business owner who has an unwarranted negative review. I once again edited my review to combat some things he said. I bought a different car the next day that was a lot nicer and I'm going to be happier with it. I just had my first daughter on July 5th and was just trying to find a car safer for her to be in. I wasn't out to ruin this guy's business or anything but after he threatened me the gloves were off. I'm glad you guys enjoyed my post and I'll update again if anything worth posting happens. This happened a few years back, but I remembered it at work today. I work at a spa slash salon at the front desk. The employees get a pretty good discount on services, so plenty of them get their nails, lashes, hair, etc. done regularly. The rule is pay when you are done your service, like any other client, but some wiggle room was allowed in the case of payday is tomorrow, I'll pay as soon as the money goes through, or if the front desk was busy helping clients, and they had to leave, we know where they will be tomorrow morning at 9. We would put these services on hold, and the employee would pay as soon as possible. It mostly worked on the honor system of don't abuse it, or we can't have nice things anymore. Most employees were pretty good about it, but of course there were the few that regularly forgot for days or weeks, or I can't pay today, I'll pay tomorrow and these few were usually the ones with the most seniority, in years worked, not power. 
One of these employees in particular was far worse than the others. Onto the compliance, one day the owner comes in to pick some things up and asks someone on the desk what is that little button with 23 notifications on it. I stepped in and answered that's the staff services that are on hold. We have less than 23 employees which means that one or more employees owe for multiple services. The owner exploded. She started shouting that it's absolutely ridiculous this many people owed her money and how could you have let it get this far? And who are the employees that owe? I started to reply well, most of them are. She cuts me off and says just add it up now and tell me so I can talk to them about taking it out of their paychecks. I started to open up the window to show the list of employees who owed for services and said okay, just letting you know that the reason there are so many, and she cuts me off again and says ugh you guys, front desk I guess, always have an excuse, there is no excuse, just do it, and storms off to the staff room. My other desk coworker who had been hiding in the bathroom, I can't blame her, to be honest, comes out and asks, did she see the names on the list? I replied she did not and got to work on my list, writing out the names of the employees next to their total owing for their services in order from most owed to least. About 30 minutes later the boss comes down in all her holy terror and demands the list. I handed it to her and after glancing at it for a moment she froze. Y'all if you have never seen someone lose their steam in front of your very eyes I highly recommend it. At the top of my list is this owner's adult daughter's name who happens to be an employee and consequently owes the spa nearly $400 in services after her 50% discount and not including tax. She had gone back to school recently and was only working part time so I guess she was short on money and regularly snuck out without paying for her lashes and her nails. Back to my shell shocked boss, after staring at the list for a moment in silence she went over to the computer, opened up the list of on hold services and scrolls through 90% of the services on hold are her daughters. After a few more minutes of staring at the list she finally looks up and says I'm her mother and the owner, so I'm going to pay this however I want all the receipts to give her, and she is not to get any services, unless she prepays. I'll tell her this myself. Make sure the rest of the on-holds are paid by the end of the employee's next shifts. I cashed her daughter's services out, bundled the receipts, gave them to my boss, she thanked me and left. I'm simultaneously sad and relieved that I wasn't present for the verbal ass whopping her daughter received. Just happened a few days ago, on the way to vacation with the family. The terminal agent calls for boarding. We get in line, my wife, 13 year old daughter, 16 year old son and myself. We are somewhat near the front of the line and it quickly grows to a couple hundred people. I see an elderly couple, woman was using a cane and both were slow moving, but they apparently didn't want to board during the assisted boarding time. I leaned out as they walked near me and asked if they would like to take our place in line. They looked a little surprised but happily accepted. As I was helping them into the line I hear some guy, about 5 people back, sighing and making comments under his breath. I was just about to leave the line and head to the back with my son when the couple behind us insisted we stayed. I told them it was no problem for us to go to the back, but they weren't having it. The sighing douche overheard our conversation and decided to interject. If he wants to leave, let him. Otherwise he may as well let all the other old people cut in line. I look at this little toad, not even as big as my 13 year old daughter, images of me tossing him and his festering Napoleon complex into a trash can are dancing in my mind. Instead I decided to give him what he asked for. I sent my son back in the line to find any elderly people who were behind us. In a minute he returned with a lovely couple, about 70. They slipped right into line. A moment later, he found two women traveling together, right into line. The couple behind us were almost in tears, not sure if from laughter or just enjoyed watching a teen escort elderly people towards the front of the line. Napoleon Complex is having a silent tantrum as the line is going slowly, even without old line cutters. He walks from the line, complains to the agent and boards immediately. Squeaky wheel got his grease after all. It took about 10 minutes for us to go through boarding check and enter the plane. It was two rows of three seats on that plane. As we near our own number one realized my wife is supposed to sit opposite me, in the same row as Napoleon Complex. 
I called an audible, and she sat with the kids, while I took the aisle seat with Napoleon Complex. He looked like he was going to pee in his pants and just stared out the window. I made sure it was the most uncomfortable 5 hour flight of his life. Strange how bullies never shut up until they're afraid. I worked at a call center for a company that handled customer service calls for a telecom provider. We used a timekeeping system called Chronos to clock in and out of work and break time. At one point they started to round our clock out times to the time the call center queue closed, which meant that if we clocked out at 2015, changed form 2007 because it caused confusion, they would round it down to 20 hundred hours, often enough we would have calls coming in at 1959 or 20 hundred hours, which could easily go on for 5 to 15 minutes. After we talked to our management about this, and they refused to change the policy back, we started to log out at exactly 20 hundred hours. This meant telling customers that we were now closed, and to call back in the following morning. After 3 days the policy was reversed, and we were also allowed to clock in 5 minutes before, so we could open up our systems. Never been one to take time off on sick leave despite having a public sector job that pays full pay for up to 6 months of sick absence 18 years in the same job and only 3 periods of actual sick leave in that time. Anytime I was feeling a bit under the weather I would have rang into the office and used a day's annual leave, get some rest, over the counter meds and an early night ready to be back at work the next day. A number of years ago the powers that be, for some still unknown reason decreed that this was to stop. If you were sick you must be put off on sick leave and you could not book a day's annual leave. A while after this policy was implemented I awoke feeling none too clever. I rang into the office to inform my boss that I was sick. He said that was okay thanks for letting him know see you in the morning. I replied by asking, what do you mean, I'm sick, I don't know when I'll be feeling well enough to come back to work. This seemed to surprise him somewhat lol I informed him that when I was feeling well enough to return to work I would let him know. Cue the obligatory 7 days off certified sick absence off work on full pay and not a day's annual leave used. Unsurprisingly this policy did not stand the test of time. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.